Hi, I love Ham Fest. You might too. We got a big one coming up, or by the time you watch this, it probably passed. But I bet you're likely to go to one in the future, and that's why I developed this. This is a simple little kit, a little pack, with a bunch of tools in it that you can use when you're at a ham fest, digging through those piles and test out equipment before you buy it so you make sure you don't waste your money. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this bad boy. In the front pocket, it's like a... I don't even know why people make uh, pockets like this. I think once upon a time, these were supposed to be for cell phones. It's not really a radio pocket because there's no spot for the antenna, uh, but I have a Belka DX. This is a shortwave radio that pretty much only does shortwave broadcast and amateur radio frequencies. So this won't do VHF, UHF, or broadcast AM even, or uh, long wave. It's, it's, it's fairly focused as a short wave. You can see 1.5 to 31 megahertz. All mode though, so you can use this again for any HF ham radio. I went with this mainly for the size, the packing size. It's just it's just the smallest thing you can you can get pretty much. I, I will give a nod if somebody's looking for a replacement or something else. Uh, a really good universal type of receiver for this role would be something like the ICOM R30. These are now discontinued, so they're incredibly difficult to find. I did a review on this radio a long time ago, like two years now, and when I once I heard it was being discontinued, I had to go out and buy one. Very expensive though, very, very expensive. This is not a scanner, this is a general coverage receiver. And yeah, it's, it's 0.1 megahertz to 3,304 point nine 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 megahertz. So very wide-banded uh, receiver. This does D-Star, P25, a couple other digital modes, and obviously FM, AM, upper sideband, lower sideband, everything you expect. So if you were in the market at a ham fest and you found yourself a you know a really nice handheld radio or mobile VHF, UHF radio, you could use this uh, to test the receive side at least, right? And, and that's kind of what you're interested in when you have a radio like this. And if you're doing HF, you know, obviously you could have this receiver to go along with you um, because it's light and tiny, right? At the end of the day, this one's probably the way to go if you're doing HF, but if you're a VHF, UHF person, or high band and stuff, high frequency, you may want to go with something a little bit more feature rich. Um, again, you're not looking for the best receiver in this case, you're looking for something that can receive well enough for you to validate whether the radio you're about to buy, you know, so if you had a an older HT, and you weren't sure if it was transmitting well or what the audio was like. This has a record capability as well, so you can transmit into this. I hopefully you get the idea, right? So there's there's the first item, the Belka DX. There's a pen. Uh, grab any pen. I go with red a lot of times just for notes, so I can tr transcribe them. There's two pockets, Molly Web connections on the back. If you want to use those, those work pretty well. Not easy to clip back in though. All right. So first pocket on the outside, I have a pocket meter uh, and an antenna and another antenna and a very interesting little case here. It's kind of like an Altoids tin. We'll get into this in a second. This guy's really cool. So a pocket meter fulfills a couple of roles. It is a multimeter, it is a data logger, and it's an oscilloscope. Now, this is not a precise meter, and you can go look up reviews online on what you think um, as far as these are considered, but they do run off your phone, which is kind of handy. So you can see here, I've, I've extended the little leggies. It sees it on the phone. And there we go. All right, so nine volt battery here, you can see. You take your little prongs. There you go. Pretty stable. I have found that this is, it, it can drift a lot, particularly if you're doing like resistance. Uh, so let's, let's go back to resistance here and let's just take this antenna and I'll push down real hard with the probes and you'll see it kind of jumps around, which is not great. So if I, if I really try to get my hands in there and hold the probes down, even my subtle movements, it, it kind of jumps. However, continuity works well enough. Do the thing. There you go. Anyway, kind of useful 
for in some cases where you need a, a multimeter type thing. The oscilloscope does work as well, but it's also pretty slow. And I don't know how much of that you're going to get into when you're out in a ham fest digging through stuff, but it's nice to have. It does come with these little jumper leads, the hook style like you would use on an oscilloscope. And these just kind of slap into the side of this guy like a so, like that. And there you got a little um, constant probe that you can hook onto a leg of a, of a component or whatever if you wanted to use the oscilloscope that has the most utility right there. It also comes with a replacement fuse if you do blow it because this device has a 50, sorry, 60 volt uh, max cap capacity and I think it, it uh, can only do about two amps. So you do have to be careful with this. It, it's super tiny, right? I mean, it's kind of to be expected, I guess, a little bit that you'd baby this thing. It's again, um, more for its size and convenience than, than anything else. So my, my, little, my little tin here, this QRP Me has a ham fest toolkit as they call it. And it's a really interesting project. I built this on a live stream a while back. It comes with two leads, right? And it comes with, well, I provided the battery. And here, you know, let me pull it out so you can better look at it. They do provide the tin, which I think is kind of cool, zomboids. And yeah, take, take a look at this thing. So what this does, and you know, let me turn it so you can actually read it. There's two uh, stages for this. This will provide a constant voltage, so it's a, it's a mini power supply for like testing LEDs, um, meters in some cases. It will do frequency counting. It will test speakers by putting a tone through it. It has a um, 20 meter and 40 meter signal generation, so you can actually push down the button here and it'll generate a signal when you have the leads connected and it uses these as an antenna. So case in point, it's got, let's plug the battery in here and hook up the 20 meter, the post for 20 meters you can see the signal there so you can use this to test a receiver and on the 2.5 volt little mark here if we put that right in there there's your LED tester there you got that capability which is kind of cool uh, fun pro tip if you're gonna do the clock test to find out what crystal frequency is you probably need to leave the leads long on resistor R17 and in capacitor C17, right? Is that right? Uh, R17 and C12, sorry, which is right next to this trim pot. And then you have to go in there and actually adjust the trim pot base to get to uh, 2.5 volts, which I don't even know how I'm gonna probe this because literally nowhere I can attach the probes. This is not, boy, I wish this was in the instructions a little bit better. That would have been helpful, guys. Guys, seriously, guys. Will that hold? That is not going to hold. No, I can't do it two-handed. What am I supposed to do here? How? Why? Why, my guys? Why? Or, you know, leave me a test point or something. But uh, anyway, uh, so uh, this isn't going to be completely accurate then. All right, a little bitty speaker here. Let's get our test leads to go to speaker. So it's oscillating between the speaker inside the board and then this speaker. And it gets gradually louder. Pretty cool. <laughs> Fun stuff. All right. So yeah, you, you have to play around with it a little bit. You, you got the frequency. Push my pins back in there. Knock it off, bud. Now this also has a frequency drop here that you can plug in. That allows you to connect to a oscillator and basically the two legs you go to ground and then the other two, the, whatever that oscillating circuit is. And it'll when you hold it down, it'll actually give you the readout in Morse code through the speaker, which is kind of cool. Uh, again, speaker piezo does that oscillating frequency back and forth. It always says 72 a high pal uh, when, you, when you start it up. So that's kind of how your test cycle. And it has multiple power outputs, 2.5 volts, 25 milli, uh, millivolts, 25 microvolts, et cetera, all the way down. So you can use that for a, a wealth of different things like testing meters and whatnot, which is handy. I actually tore my whole shack apart looking for a meter to show you to demonstrate this. And I couldn't find any of them. I don't know what happened, but anyway, it, it does work. It's, it's same with the LED light that I showed earlier. It's, it's basically the same principle. And the whole thing powers off a nine volt battery, which is, which is pretty nice. I think the mint box here, Zomboids, is a is a nice 
uh, add in and the test leads of course you know they're packed in as well i've found that you generally need to use the battery connector to kind of keep the battery from <laughs> shorting to the body of the of the the mint case here that would be that would be bad you don't want to do that anyway test leads go in like that the whole thing kind of just gets slammed in place and, and i do mean slammed because it's it's kind of a tight fit for everything like so and then i have a velcro strap velcro straps always handy so there you go all right last pocket now I've, i'm of two minds on the last pocket you, you might have figured out hey there's something else with an antenna in here i think i'm going to swap this out I, I don't i don't like the i don't know that this is the way i want to go all right so last pocket i have a tiny sa and a 3s lipo battery mainly because it's it's very small and it, it can pack up um, really nicely. You can start HF radios with this and, and mobile radios too, or you know whichever radio has a coaxial lead. Probably throw in some alligator clips uh, to, to run off of this to power. So just take your Anderson's alligator clip both end and then there you go, you can power off of that. So I can't decide between the Nano VNA or the Tiny SA. Obviously the Tiny SA has utility if you are buying handheld radios and you can test spurious emissions. You can use it to actually see frequencies that, that whatever radio is transmitting on. That can, be, that can be valuable. However, this guy is good for looking at filters, um, antennas, matching networks, all that stuff. You, you can do a lot with the Nano VNA. So I think I'm gonna swap to the Nano VNA and, and pack this. The problem is that you're also packing a, a lot of other stuff, right? You gotta have the SMA connections, you gotta have the cable, you gotta do the whole thing. With the tiny SA, you just you just have this antenna. Obviously, these do two different, completely different uh, roles, fit different roles, and it's really gonna depend on what you plan on buying when you go to a ham fest. So yeah, I'll let you decide. What would you take? Would you take the nano VNA or the tiny SA? Love to hear that in the comments. Well, I think the tiny SA is cool. Um, I realize that the Belka is doing the gross calculation of does the radio transmit, right? So I, I think go, just going with the Belka and, and leaving that as my receiver to verify that the radio works is good enough in this case. So that's good, staying at home. Sorry, Tiny SA. So what would you add in your little kit? Uh, this is just a cheapy bag. I think I picked this up off of Amazon. By the way, all the links again will be in the description for things you can buy off of Amazon. It's a system that can easily be replaced with, you know, your own a different kind of radio, larger batteries, put it in a bigger bag. You get the idea. I like to travel light and this is pretty small. So that's why I went with it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Live stream every Saturday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and every other week now for Ham Nation. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You have a good week now. See ya.